created for him and for him. Your gifts are included in that. Everything that God has given you was created for that very purpose. The glory of God. Good evening, family. Will you please stand to your feet this evening as we're about to praise and worship the Lord in this house tonight.
Yes, Father, we worship you. We love you. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we can be in your presence tonight. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us this privilege to be in your presence everywhere we go. Father, we just want to declare that we will not let the rock shout out, cry out your praises, but we will do it. We will shout out your praises, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Thank you. Yes, for your wonderful, wonderful presence here tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Family, I want to welcome you. Welcome to tonight's service. It's going to be amazing. Are you guys ready? Yes. Amen. It's going to be so, so good. Can I just see if there's any first-time visitors tonight? You can just raise your hand for me if you are here for the very first time. Awesome. Welcome, family. It's so good to have all of you here. You may be seated quickly. <laughs> or before you sit, actually, I want you to wave at someone. <laughs> Hello, Elaine. What's Hi, up? Hello. <laughs> yeah, thank you, family. It's so awesome to, to have you guys here. I am very excited, Elaine, and you. I'm excited, too. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> Family, I've got some, some news for you, some church news. The first one we have is the growth track that we've, we've, um, we've started off the lockdown again. Uh, we are now, we did step two today, and so next week we're going to do step three after, after the uh, morning service. So I want to invite you to come and do that with us. It's, it's amazing. Um, you cannot miss out on this. Yeah, you just cannot. This is part, part of our, um, um, if you want to become a member, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> you have to do this. Uh, this uh, growth track, and, when, and I believe that Teacher Paul taught us as well this morning about, about these steps that we are taking, discovering God's presence and growing in, in God, getting to know God, right? Yes, that's right, Ivan. And on that note, we have another course that is compulsory uh, to become a member of CFC. This is the Christian Growth Course, and this takes place on the 17th of October. It is from 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock. So this is a Saturday. You will need to set aside. Remember, it is a requirement, so you... You should do it. Amen? Absolutely, uh, yes. This course is free of charge. So remember to please sign up at the information desk or contact the church office for more information. That is so amazing that it's free of charge. I forgot to mention that Growth Track is also free of charge. <laughs> Isn't that just awesome, right, family? It's so good. Can I just see, is there any men, brothers in Christ here this, this evening? Can I just hear you? Oh, <laughs> no. I want to hear you. <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> um, I want to remind you uh, that we are going to have a men's straight talk on the 23rd of October. This is a Friday evening at uh, 6.30. It's going to start right here at church. It's 50 rand per person, but there is benefits, Elaine. Not for you, unfortunately. <laughs> you can't be there. It's okay, Ivan. My son's coming. Yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but men, I want to invite you to this. We're going to have a braai. Yes, we are braaiing that, that, that evening, and we're going to fellowship together. It's going to be so, so good. Um, yeah, sorry, I just... I, I, Did the excitement take over? Yes, I think so. It's okay, <laughs> family. The men's talk is, or the men's straight talk is on Friday, the 23rd of October at half past six. Yes. And tickets are available at the information desk, so please grab yours after the service. They are available, and they're going to fly like hotcakes, so make sure you get yours. Get for your hubbies, get for your boyfriends, get for every man in your life. They need to be here. So I, ju I just saw actually that there is something for the ladies coming up as well. So ladies, just, just a reminder, save the date, the 6th of November. Something's going to happen. I don't know what. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but just save the date. And then family, we've got baby dedications and baptisms, baptisms happening. Um, that's going to happen on the 25th of October. Sunday morning, so please, if you want, uh, you want to baptize, your, be baptized, or bring your child for dedication, just make an appointment with Kaneta, and you can come and see Pastor Warren about that. And that is all from our side. Yes, that's all. Thank you so much, family. Enjoy the service. Enjoy the Bless service, you. family. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Um, 
something that's been on my heart a little while, uh, I have to share this with you. Uh, we are made in God's image. So Genesis 1 verse 27, before I continue, thank you Pastor Warren, Pastor Mariette for the opportunity again. Uh, I've learned my lessons. I don't need to not acknowledge you guys. So thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Um, we are made in God's image. So Genesis 1 verse 27, the Amplified says, So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Uh, in other words, we carry the reflection of God inside of us. And it is our pleasure to show God to the people around us. So in Luke, Matthew, and Mark, there's the encounter of an untrusted, untrustworthy character trying to trick Jesus into speaking against Roman rule. So this would be, uh, if he got that right, Jesus would have been accused and uh, he would have been arrested on the spot for speaking against the government. Just imagine if that happened now. But Jesus, knowing their plans and, and demonstrating the wisdom that was inside of him, he, he caught them of God. And we all know the scripture because it's, all to do about our taxes so Jesus asked for a denarii or a coin and then he asked whose image is on the coin and they replied Caesar's of course and this is what Jesus replied out of Luke 20:25. 20, he said to them then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's and funny enough if you read through that story nobody asked what is God's part what is what part should go to God? So God's image is on the one that gives and on the one that receives. So in effect, everything belongs to him. He is the owner of any, everything. And we, can, we can't give a tithe and we can't bring or give an offering because it's not ours to give. We can bring our tithe to acknowledge that God gave everything to us but we can't give it because it's not ours the passion translation of luke 20 25 says it a little bit differently and i love it it says jesus said precisely the coin bears the image of the far, of the emperor caesar and you should give back to caesar all that belongs to him but you bear the image of god so give back to god all that belongs to him so in other words he says give your all to God that's what he said and we can start by tithing as a way just to surrender our lives because everything everything belongs to him so there are four ways to give family we can use Zappa EFT um, and now I'm thinking that I forgot this in the morning sermon did I mention this in the morning sermon <laughs> I hope so um, uh, cards at the back and you can cash the, the ushers will come around for, for, with the, for, for the envelopes so please stand I just want to pray with you guys Father God I thank you I praise and I worship you Father that we can be here together I thank you Father that we can surrender to you tonight I thank you that we can we can come and we can just just be with you just experience your presence with us I thank you Father that as we tithe we acknowledge that you own everything we surrender I surrender my finances to you Father I surrender my life to you and I know Father that you will bend me but you will never break me I thank you Father that I can trust fully in you and you will never disappoint. In Jesus' name, amen.
Holy Spirit, we are all come here tonight. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your greatness here tonight. Do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. We love you. We love you. We need more of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the assignment that you have with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. We acknowledge your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Good evening, family. How are you all? Can we just give a clip offering to Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, family, you may take your seat. It is such a wonderful evening. Uh, it's raining. We've got the blessings from the Lord. Uh, the weather is pretty much good uh, for some of us. I don't know for others. Family, I want to thank, acknowledge the honor that has been bestowed upon me by my parents in the Lord, Pastor Warren and Pastor Marit, uh, to honor me with the privilege to stand before you tonight uh, just to share with you what the Holy Spirit has laid uh, on my heart. It is very difficult uh, to prepare something, especially in a relation to the Holy Spirit. Because the more you engage in prayer, he reveals more of himself to you that the preparation would need a writing of a book. Because there is so much about the Holy Spirit that we cannot finish. I discover that he is somebody that we cannot finish to describe him. We cannot finish writing about him. Just who he is. Just his works. His purpose. It's so great, it's so marvelous, you cannot really finish writing about him. But I'm glad you are here tonight, and I personally believe there is something that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us tonight, or that he wants to do uh, tonight. I want to believe that services like this are not usual services. They are unique services. As we seek to discover his presence, every moment, every time that you seek to discover about the Holy Spirit, he reveals himself more and more and more. But I want you to know that this has been laid upon one of our fellow brothers that we need to discover more and more about the Holy Spirit. And it has been laid upon my brother Ivan that we need to discover more of the Holy Spirit because there is more to discover. Amen. We just want, we just want to, this is, this is what is coming on my heart. We just want to quickly bless him for such an initiative, uh, for he listened to the voice of God. My brother, can you quickly rush upstairs here? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Uh, the band, please don't go very far. I need you as well here. The worshippers, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is already, God is doing great things. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, come and stand here, my brother. We want to take this opportunity to bless him. I have seen God using him mightily. I have seen him growing. And this initiative of discovering the Holy Spirit was laid down upon his heart. And an excitement, such a huge excitement came upon me just to say, Yes, this is it. Amen. My brother, there is an assignment that God has laid upon you, and that assignment is not small. And that assignment is beyond CFC Emarathene. Neither is it even beyond this city. It is even beyond this nation. But God has told me to tell you that the clouds are full. Because the clouds are full, they're about to empty themselves. There is a rapture that is going to happen upon you, and the living water is going to flow out of you, and wherever it will touch, there will be life. Let's just bless him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord Almighty God, for what you have bestowed upon our brother Ivan. Father, we thank you for what is going to happen through him, Father, what you are going to do through him, mighty Jesus Christ that you will go to places, minister the gospel with power, miracle signs and wonders will be happening, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Almighty God, for making him the vessel that he is, Lord Almighty God, that you will speak words and the multitude will be delivered. He will just touch people and healing will come forth. Demons will check out by the reason of his presence 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So much anointing, Lord Almighty God. The unusual anointing upon him. Unusual miracles, Lord Almighty God, that are going to come through him. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Father. We bless you. Thank you, Father, for the life of Ivan. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Family, I would like to, to teach tonight, but at the same time, I'm just warning you, forgive me, for this is all about the Holy Spirit. If he wants to do what he wants to do, we just have to comply. Uh, what I intend to teach, the title of the, of the message is The Purpose of the Holy Spirit. The Purpose of the Holy Spirit. The first scripture that I want to read is from the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, from verse 1 to verse 5. I believe it's on the yes. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, we shall not test of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taken with him Peter and James and John, and led them up into a high mountain, a part of themselves, and he was transfigured. Can you help me? I think it's, it's off now. And he led them up into a high mountain, a part by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And they appeared unto them, Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Jesus, once again for the reading of, this, of your book. Father, we thank you for what you are about to unveil, what you are about to unleash, Lord Almighty God, through these scriptures and many other scriptures that are going to come. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I would like also to acknowledge the presence of teacher Paul here. You know, as he was preaching in the morning, I said, you know, it's difficult to invite people from high there. He, he started going into my scriptures, and I said, Teacher Paul, <laughs> what's going on here? The power of the Holy Spirit. He went on to teach about the power of the Holy Spirit, and I was just said, hold on, hold on, don't go far. Don't go far. <laughs> End the day. Teacher Paul, you are welcome to Emara Sleni. God bless you, sir. <laughs> now, family, journey with me here as we look at this uh, portion of scripture that we have read. The first thing that I want us to take note of is Jesus selected three of his disciples. There were 12 altogether, but out of the 12, he selected only three, Peter, James, and John. Now, having selected these three, the scripture said he took them to a higher place. I personally believe those who are listening from home right now and those who are seated here right now, you have been carefully selected by the Holy Spirit tonight. And he wants to take you somewhere. And that somewhere is a high place. And it is not just an ordinary place. It is a high place where the secrets of the heaven are going to be revealed upon each one of us. Amen. He took them up to a higher place by themselves. Now, there is a certain place that the Holy Spirit can take you when he has come upon you, when you become one with him, when you become intimate with him. He takes you somewhere to a higher place. You won't be at the same place where you are. But something start happening inside you. Something start happening around you. Things start happening around you. Because of those happenings, 
He won't manage to remain at the same place. Let me give a quick example. You know, if inside you, you start feeling hungry, you will change place. We'll find you at McDonald's. We'll find you at Mag and Bini. Amen. If pains start troubling you, we we'll found you at Cosmos Hospital. Isn't it? What happens inside us, what happens around us, takes us to a certain place. So if the Holy Spirit is inside you, and when he starts doing some things with you, family, you won't afford to remain at the same place. You will grow from lower place to higher places where things will start to change. And the way you will go, he is with you. He is the one who has taken you there. So having that knowledge, it will make you know that in every office that you will enter, the Holy Spirit has entered. In every room that you will enter, in every way that you will go, you will know that God is with you. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Because he takes you to higher places. So if you see yourself at the lower places, remaining at the same place for a long time, and are more and seek his presence. When, he, when you found him, when you develop a relationship with him, he's going to take you somewhere there, up there, in higher places. For this is what he specializes in, taking people to higher places. Amen. Now, when he took them there, at a higher place, he just did not take them there to experience what they could experience at lower places. But at a higher place, there is unusual miracles. Life there at a higher place is not ordinary life. This is where the supernatural happens. Amen. Jesus got transfigured at such a place. What actually happens is God himself showed the three disciples that the distance between heaven and earth is so thin in the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you seek him, when you make a choice that I want more of the Holy Spirit, I want to experience heaven here on earth, the distance is so small. The distance is so small for God to reveal unto you the things of the heaven. What is happening in the spiritual realm. But what you have to do is to be willing to go to a higher place. Is to be willing to seek more and more and more of him. When you do that, he will definitely take you to a higher place. Let's look at this. The presence of the Holy Spirit takes you from one place to another. You cannot afford to be where you are today. When things are stagnant in your life, but when you make a choice and a decision to seek and discover Holy Spirit, he reveals to you where he wants you to be and where he wants to take you to. Now, just after the creation, Adam and Eve, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, things were so good. God's Spirit was among us to them. He was the Holy Spirit with them. And they found themselves in the Garden of Eden. But now look here. The moment they disconnected themselves from the presence of the Holy Spirit by doing what they did, places changed. God took them out of the garden. So, this is what happens. If you seek more of the Holy Spirit and have a good relationship with him, places shift. There is a shift that happens in your life. There is a shifting that happens to your life. So, as you seek more of him, he will shift you professionally. He will shift you from the job that you are now. He will shift your business, you will shift your marriage, you will shift 
every part of your life. Why? He is not a stagnant spirit, but he is an active and moving spirit. The Bible says, the spirit of God was hovering upon earth. He is not a stagnant spirit, but he is active. He moves from place to place. He takes you from one place to another place. But that is when you seek more of him. Amen. I want to take you to the next scripture. Which is uh, second book of Timothy. Second book of Timothy 1 verse 6 to 7. Second Timothy 1, 6 to 7. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God he has not given us spirit of fear, but of power. But of power and love, of love and of sound mind. What I want to put emphasis on here is power. When Holy Spirit comes upon you, he is power himself, and he gives you power. He empowers you to do things that you are not able to do, that even the people around you can start feeling you. I remember family, one, uh, one day I went downtown to a fellow friend who specialized in repairing uh, laptops. So I had some business to do with him, so I entered the shop. So there were two other guys that were seated on a bench. So as I was busy talking to the guy who was repairing uh, my laptop, one of the two guys who was seated there, he came to where I was talking with this guy. And he said, who is this referring to me? And the guy, the shop owner said, can you please ask him? So he said, yeah. Hey, bro, who are you? Now he has changed the statement. To this one, he said, who is this? Now to me, he's saying, who are you? I got so surprised that why is this guy confronting me and asking me who I am? So I said, my name is Julius. And he said, I don't want your name. Who are you? So this guy clearly, he understood very well that I'm not understanding his question. And I'm not giving him the satisfactory answer that he wants. So he said, okay, let me give you an example. The person that you see seated there, he is a sangoma. And me, I am an inganga. So I'm like, why is this guy telling me about all these things? So I said, okay. So now I'm going to ask you again, who are you? I want to show you something here about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because majority of us, we become victimized by devil because we don't understand what is inside us. We don't understand the power, the dunamis power, the power that we carry. So he said, now answer me, who are you? So I still could not understand after this explanation. So he said, okay, let me make it, let me make it very easy for you. I'm going to church now, maybe you understand. There is a bishop. So me as an Ingang, as an Ingang, I'm like a bishop. And this one is just like a pastor. So who are you? I said, okay. So I said, say, my name is Julius. He got frustrated. He said to the owner of the shop, listen, is, if this guy is still in this shop, I'm taking my business away. You better give me back my, my laptops. I cannot be in the same room where this guy is. Because the spirit inside him is bothering the spirit inside me. What is inside him is bothering me. It's bothering what is inside me. We can't mix. We can't be in the same room. It's either he live or I'm living and I'm living with my business. So I'm like, wow. My eyes were opened. And I said, Lord, thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Now I understand what I carry. Now I know the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I know what you, you Holy Spirit do. Family, many of the Christians, they become victimized because they don't know what they carry. Because you don't know. And devil takes advantage of our lack of knowledge. Know the power of the Holy Spirit. Understand what you carry inside you. When that happens, you will not be a victim, but you will be a victor. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power that is described as a dynamis power. I want to quickly move, because there is something that I want us to quickly do. Now to my teachings, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, number one, is to teach us. Is to teach us. John 14, verse 25 to 26. All this I have spoken while he's still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Understanding that the Holy Spirit has got a function to teach us on its own will save you from a lot of making ill decisions. When you know that I, I cannot do this on my own, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, and you seek more of the Holy Spirit, you enter into your closet and say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Without you, I don't know what to do. Without you, I don't know what to say. You know, there are moments that you can, on your own, without the Holy Spirit, think that people hate you. They don't like you. Your boss does not like you. Your wife does not love you anymore. Your husband does not love you anymore. You have been fairly untreated at work. They always honor others more than they honor you. They always overshadow you. So, I am useless. This is what you see with your naked eye. But the moment you engage the Holy Spirit and enter into the presence of the Holy Spirit, I, uh, when you enter in that face and he opens your eyes, he will start teaching you and showing you that this is what I'm thinking of you. Of all men, of all women, born by a man, nobody is greater than you. You are an apple of my eye. You are so valuable in the kingdom of God. You are so useful in the kingdom of God. When you come out of that moment, you will not cry anymore. You will not see yourself as a victim anymore. But the Holy Spirit has opened your eyes. You have seen something that you, you didn't know before. Even as you read the scriptures, reading the scriptures without the involvement of the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to understand some of these verses. You will not be able to understand this book without the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is the author of the Bible. So if you want to understand about the Bible, you got to seek more of him. And he opens up scriptures. He gives you revelation. He gives you deeper things. He opens up heaven just in front of you to see everything that is happening in your life. Just this week as we were praying, my fellow brother Charles, he brought up uh, the miracle of how the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. And I just went into a moment where God said, there is a miracle in this miracle that people don't see. And I'm just like, God, what do you mean there is a miracle in this miracle and people don't see it? And immediately, the Holy Spirit revealed to me the scriptures that speak about the love of God. The love of God is deeper than oceans. 
So I'm like, God, why, what does it has to do with this miracle that we don't see in this miracle? He sent me back, and what I saw was like a movie of how the, is, the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. It was like a movie in front of me. I saw Moses with the rod parting the Red, the Red Sea, parting waters, one boat this side, one boat this side of water. And the Israelites passing through. But there is something peculiar. There is something unique that the Holy Spirit showed me and said, this is what I meant. That in this miracle, there is another miracle that people don't see. Now, look here. That first scripture that he had revealed to me that the love of God is deeper than an ocean. I began to see how deep oceans are. How deep seas are. So, which means even if the water parted. There was still a big hole. It was deep. It was like a grave. Very, you could not see where it was ending there. So the Israelites just going in there. They were like going inside a grave. They were going to be buried. But the one thing that I saw and got reminded is the love of God is deeper than an ocean. And that the Holy Spirit he makes things happen. I saw in this movie that the Holy Spirit showed me, I saw the surface of the sea coming up like this and flatten the space. And I saw the children of Israel walking on a surface ground. Amen. That had happened when the, is the, the, the Egyptians, which were following them, when they ended in that same ground, Again, I saw the same surface that it came up, going down, and they were buried. There is a miracle in that miracle. We only need the Holy Spirit to have a clear understanding of the scriptures. We only need the Holy Spirit to have a better understanding of the things that he does and of the things that surround us. We cry many times and become victims where, uh, where we should have just get in the presence of the Holy Spirit and he reveals and he teaches us and he shows hidden things. Then we will stop crying. We will seek more and more of him. Last week as we were praying as staff members, there's something that the Holy Spirit revealed to Pastor Maret. She said, I was praying and I was saying, God, I want to enter in your throne room. And the Holy Spirit revealed to you that that's very far. I'm here. I'm here. Throne room is very far. I'm here. That's the Holy Spirit. We don't know for how long. Yes, she'd been thinking that I must go in the throne room. And it's somewhere, somewhere we don't know very far. And the Holy Spirit softly say, Mariette, that's very far. I'm here. So without him, she will still think and visualize somewhere far. But her understanding that he is very close, and he is close, close, that you, you cannot separate yourself from how close he is, it completely changed her perspective. Completely changed her perspective. So sometimes our understanding and our perspective are controlled by what we know and what we don't know. But thank God, we have got the Holy Spirit as our teacher. He teaches us things that are hidden. But only when we make a decision to separate ourselves from the rest and say, Lord, I just need you. Holy Spirit, I just need more and more of you. The hunger that you have for the Holy Spirit, the thirst that you grow for the Holy Spirit is the one that will determine the amount of the information that the Holy Spirit will reveal, will upload into your life. And when that happens, you are growing and he is taking you from another level to a higher level. With the Holy Spirit, you cannot afford to be where you were yesterday. There must be a change. 
there must be a transformation. There must be growth. There must be a change of address. There must be a change of financial status. There must be a change of your understanding of who God is and the works of God. So when you see yourself in one place, ask yourself, am I spending time with the Holy Spirit? Am I seeking more of the Holy Spirit? But remain in one place for an unreasonable length of time. It's not good for you. And it's a sure sign that the Holy Spirit in you, that you are not seeking more of him. You are not engaging more with him. You know, remain at one place. It's a prison on its own. That only you can set yourself free. You know how bad a prison is? There are people who are in prison behind bars. But there are people who are in prison outside the bars. Being in prison is being restricted to one place for a long time. If one is sentenced for five years, the family members, they cry. It, he has not been convicted to an extent that they want to kill him or kill her. He's just going to be confined in one place. But you cry of your dearest brother. That confinement on its own is not right. Even if, if they say you are going to be under house arrest, it's not good to be in one place for a long time. But with the understanding and engagement and involvement of the Holy Spirit in your life, he takes you to places. He takes you to different places. We need more of the Holy Spirit. Purpose number two, to provide wisdom and knowledge. To provide wisdom and knowledge. I'm going to read from the book of John 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. When he teaches you all things, you end up having wisdom and knowledge that other people don't have. Because you have decided to separate. You are Peter, John, and James. You have decided to separate yourself and go to a higher place. So wisdom and knowledge will come upon you. I have been to different places. I have Googled different places. Now, look here. There are so many schools of philosophy around the world where they teach you philo philosophy. Excuse me. There are so many schools of psychology where they teach you psychology. But I haven't yet seen the school of wisdom where they teach you wisdom. And the school of wisdom is there, the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is only taught by the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is only taught by the Holy Spirit. Unless you want the worldly wisdom, which will take you to a different direction, you can get it. But true wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. True wisdom comes from God. So if you desire true wisdom, you need the Holy Spirit to come into your life and teach you true wisdom. You need the Holy Spirit to show you who he is, what he can do in your life. Amen. Purpose number three, to testify to the gospel and confirm truth. John chapter 15, verse 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. He will testify about me. Now listen here. Get this understanding. The scripture said, he will testify about me. So the 
the scripture here is clearly showing us that the Holy Spirit will testify about God through you. He has to be inside you for you to be able to testify about the goodness of God, for you to be an effective witness, for you to be an effective warrior. You need the Holy Spirit, for he will testify about the goodness of God through you. So without him, you cannot be an effective witness. Without him, you cannot be an effective minister. You need more of him so that you become what God wants you to be in your life. Amen. Romans 9 verse 1. I will speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. Confirms it through the Holy Spirit. The confirmation that we want about the things that comes into our mind, the ideas that comes to us, the decision that comes to us, the confirmation must not be our emotions, must not be our feelings, must not be how you see your perspective, how you see things, but must be through the Holy Spirit. He's the one who must confirm, yes, this is the right decision. Go for it. You can do it. I am with you. This is why David would ask God before he get, engages in a fight, must I go? Must I do it? Pastor Warren taught us about choosing right words, choosing right weapon. So who confirms to you that this is the right weapon? Who confirms to you that these are the right words? Who confirms to you that confront, pray, fast, keep quiet? It's only the Holy Spirit. So lack of him makes us choose wrong weapons. And we become victims, yet we are created and meant to be victors. So we need the Holy Spirit. Every word that we got taught here by our pastor, for that word to remain in us, and for that word to be able to work for us, we need the Holy Spirit to, 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 to remind us of the word when situations approaches us, when we are in certain circumstances. That, but Pastor Warren taught us this word. I need to choose the right weapon. But at the same time, how do I know which one is the right weapon? Okay, I've got a knife, I've got a gun. Which one? It is only the Holy Spirit that confirms to you that dear son, Dear daughter, we need a gun or we need a sling. Hallelujah. I'm going to say the last uh, uh, purpose according to my time and my paper, but that's not the last purpose of the Holy Spirit. Like I said, you cannot finish. To empower believers for evangelism, Acts 1 verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. The Spirit enabled Jesus' followers to be like him. He's the one who empowers the disciples to be like him, to do things that they could not do with, the, with their own understanding. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be victim. You will be victimized. You will not be able to do things that you should do as an asset in the kingdom of God. In this March, 8th of March, I found myself in a certain situation, in a certain uh, environment, and mostly in wrong hands, in the hands of the enemy. I want to show you the power of the Holy Spirit. I had one-to-one, face-to-face, eyebrow-to-eyebrow with the enemy. And he spoke to me that this is what we are going to do to you negatively. I won't give much details. But after the enemies spoke, 
what they wanted to do with me in destroying me and in destroying this ministry, when they had left, the Holy Spirit came, strengthened me, encourages me, and made me see the future, and made me see tomorrow. And I want you to understand this. I was in chains. I was in chains. I was in a confined space. And I was surrounded by the enemy. And the enemy is breathing fire around me. And the Holy Spirit is whispering, Julius, I have not forsaken you. I am with you. Family, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, understanding and knowing who you are, you will not be victimized. You will not be victimized. What I went through, if I had gone through that just as Julius, I don't think I would have come victorious. The power of the Holy Spirit brought me to where I am today. And the power of prayer. If, we, if only we can know and understand the effectiveness of our prayers, we will pray more. We will seek more of God. We will seek more of the Holy Spirit. As I was in that place, in that moment, the people who were surrounding me were strongly disturbed by the prayers that were done in this ministry. By some of you, I could know who is praying in this moment. I could hear them trying to shut Pastor Marie said, Marie, keep quiet. Keep quiet. What are you saying? What are you doing? I could hear that Pastor Marie is praying in tongues. What is she saying now? I could understand what is going on. Family, when you pray, you are causing havoc in the kingdom of the enemy. Whenever you make a decision to seek God and to seek more of the Holy Spirit, you are causing havoc in the kingdom of God. Many died premature death. Many people ended in situations that they should have not ended. Many people left their houses. Many people get divorced. Many people lost jobs. Things that should have not happened. But they happened because of lack of knowledge. If they had known the Holy Spirit earlier, like what teacher Paul said, that uh, John Maxwell, was it John Maxwell, who said your marriage did not end last night, but it ended a long time ago. The ending was just a manifestation of something that has been happening in a long time. Family, when we seek and make a choice to be intimate with the Holy Spirit, and when we seek to understand Holy Spirit, great things happen in our life. We will not be victims. We will not be victims. I have come to a position where if I tell you some of the things that I do, you think like uh, he, he must be crazy. There are things that the Holy Spirit has told me to completely ignore. You come to a moment to, that you know that I, I am surrounded. I am completely surrounded. And you, you, you choose to put your hands in your pocket and whistle. But the Holy Spirit has ministered to you and said, look here. You might be surrounded physically, but uh, just look at the host of angels around you. You, you, won't, you won't be moved by all this surrounding and the legs. The things that happens to me, that maybe my wife can tell you, me, I'm not going to tell you. You can just try to try. That, 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 that I experience, that we experience by our house. Before the Holy Spirit taught me more about himself, I, should, I was having sleepless nights, praying, casting out demons, devil, most of the ice. But when the Holy Spirit taught me that, hey, Julius, you are wasting your energy. You are wasting your anointing. You are highly anointed, not for this. That's just draining your energy. 
Now, when it comes, the new Julius is relaxed. I'm relaxed. I know who I am. I know the power that I carry. I cannot just be used by demons anymore. I cannot just be used by demons anymore. They can overwork you. They can suck your anointing. They can take your time, the time that you should be able to do something effectively. You spend your time dealing with them. But when the understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and who you are and who is inside you will make you see things differently. Will make you see things differently. Breathe. Hallelujah. Family, according to the book of John, chapter 20, verse 20, 21, Jesus Christ, when he died and he is erected, his disciples were in a room. They were probably scared that the people who had killed Jesus Christ is going to come after them. The Bible says they locked themselves in a house. They entered into their own lockdown, which was not regulated by the government, but they by themselves. The Bible says Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared in the house where there was fear, where they've just locked themselves because of the physical circumstances. When he appeared, he showed them his wooden hands and said, look here. I am alive, like I told you. And the Bible says, he breathed unto them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. He is the breath of God. Breathe. I want us to be aware of the breath of God. He is willing to breathe unto you tonight.
Spirit, we are desperate for you. We are desperate for you, Holy Ghost. We are thirsty for you. We need you now. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come upon our in personal life. Come upon our life, Holy Spirit, in this very moment. Come upon us now, Holy Spirit. Come and change situations in our life. Come and change our marriages. Come and change our spiritual life. Come and transform us, Holy Spirit. Intervene in our situations tonight. Intervene in our health matters tonight. We are so thirsty for you. We are so desperate for you, Holy Spirit. We need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Come and do what only you can do.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have released tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have just done in our life. We thank you, Father. You have transformed our lives. We have transformed our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Family, I have seen this great eruption happening uh, like a volcano, but it's not an eruption of destruction, but it's an eruption of the Spirit of God. Revival coming. That eruption is going to happen in your personal life. That eruption is going to happen in this ministry in the body of Christ, in this nation. I want you to get ready. I want you to engage. But as for this ministry, this eruption is going to happen in time like this, in a moment like this. I want to advise you not to miss these services. I, it is my desire for everyone to be part of this, to feel and engage in the presence of God. And it's not very far. It's very close. Get ready, my brother Ivan, for the time is now. May God bless you. May you enjoy the, the sweet fellowship of God. May you know that you are highly empowered by the Holy Spirit. May you understand the power that you carry. May you be an effective minister wherever you are. May you be restored from this moment. May whatever that has been taken away from you be restored. May you live a life of miracle. May you see and experience unusual miracles. May you testify of the goodness of the Lord. God bless you, family. Amen. Oh, thank you, Pastor Julius. Family, can we just give him another hand? That was awesome. That's so good. I can't wait <laughs> for the Holy Spirit to be poured out on us like He's never been poured out before. It's going to be amazing. Family, will you stand with me? Let's just do this de declaration quickly uh, before I let you go. So this is a prayer in act, but I want us to declare this over ourselves and ask the Father, actually just pray this over ourselves. So you can just say this after me. Father in heaven, but you must say this with expectation. Don't play. <laughs> Let's go again, okay? Father in heaven, grant to your servants that we may with all boldness speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Amen. Family, you must have a blessed week. And we'll, we love you and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much.